first of all, I uh, appreciate you guys joining on our Zoom call. This seems to be the new wave right now. I've had a lot of Zoom calls. Um, but I just uh, hope you guys are doing well. Um, just unprecedented times and obviously uh, a lot of question marks and um, our, our norm is no longer our norm. And um, it's been a little bit challenging, but at the same time, I think there's uh, definitely a lot of blessings, um, you know, in regards to what we're going through right now. I know for me personally, um, I probably had more family dinners in 31 years of coaching than I ever have. And, um, you know, just some really quality family time. I think the most challenging thing for me is I've uh, been picking up the homeschooling um, piece of it. And I've got a brand new appreciation and respect for teachers. I always have, but, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. And so uh, that's been challenging and just the balance of trying to work from home and, and uh, you know, recruiting and Zoom calls and whatnot. And at the same time, uh, doing some homeschooling stuff, but um, just pray that everyone's hanging in there and, and uh, looking forward to getting our students back on campus, getting our student athletes back on campus, and um, appreciate everyone's work on the front lines to help keep this community safe. Colin's up first. Go ahead, Colin. Hey, Coach. Uh, the NCAA today just announced that they're raising the limit of contact hours you can have, not in person, to eight. Just what were you able to do with the four that it was before, and and what does the extra four hours do for you? Well, I think you know it affects all um, athletic teams a little bit differently. Um, we haven't been doing a lot. We've been staying in touch. I mean, first and foremost, it's about our student athlete safety and and uh, connecting with them. And, and uh, we've been doing Zoom, cool, Zoom calls and FaceTimes and, and making sure we're reaching out to them. But our, our priority was to make sure that they uh, were able to get into a routine and a schedule academically. Um, it's just, it's different. You know, I know for my own kids how different it's been. And um, I know for them, the tutoring, the mentoring, the, the class discussions online, it's just, there's a lot there. And so I think it's, it's really about putting first things first and, and having priorities. And uh, we certainly got a lot of work to do, but I also think, um, you know, just making sure we're there for them during this time. I, I haven't, I just found out I was on a head coach's call about an hour ago and then I had a recruiting call. So I haven't put in a lot of thought into, you know, that information that just came out, but um, you know, we'll, we'll sit down as a staff and talk about how we want to navigate through all that. Up next is Eric from the trip. Go ahead, Eric. Hey, Coach. Hope you and the family are doing well. Uh, obviously, the WNBA draft is tomorrow night. What is it about Amber Smith's game that translates for what you did, she did at Mizzou that could lead to a successful professional career? Yeah, I really hope she has the opportunity. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. She'll have a chance to play professional. Um, and obviously, an opportunity in the WNBA would be phenomenal. But, you know, I think the thing that sticks out to me uh, on the court with Amber is obviously her versatility and you know, her ability um, to play multiple positions. Um, I think, you know, just offensively scoring on three different levels. Um, defensively uh, has had to play against some of the best and the best in the SEC and, and always held their own very well. But, you know, I think what um, magnifies her stock to me is just the type of teammate, leader, and in person that she is. Um, you know, she brings so much value to a program. And uh, we're certainly going to miss her and, and appreciate everything she's done for us over the last four years. And I'm excited to see the next um, stage in her career. And there's no doubt she's going to be very successful, whether it's in the WNBA or, or professionally overseas. Um, I think up next is Tyler. Go ahead, Tyler. Uh, hi, Robin. Uh, you, you all added a player today, a signee. Just I'm going to butcher the name, so I'm going to have to let you say it first. Um, but can you just talk about what uh, she brings to the team? Yeah, we're really excited about Mama. What a cool name, huh? Um, but she just, she's a piece that we have needed. Um, you know, she's, she's about 5'8", uh, maybe 5'9", but she's got a six-foot wingspan, uh, which is really long. And um, she's got an unbelievable motor. Um, she's uh, probably a defensive nightmare. Uh, she just, she can... Um, she can defend 90 feet from the basket. She's the kind of kid that will be able to get us some extra possessions. Um, very quick, very explosive. Offensively, uh, not really, I wouldn't classify her as a scoring point guard, 
more of a um, um, dribble penetrating creator. Uh, she does have the ability to finish at the rim. She can shoot the three. Uh, she's got some work to do on the perimeter side of things, but uh, just as great handles, high basketball IQ, phenomenal passer. So more of a distributor offensively, um, but defensively, you know, I think she's going to be um, probably different than we've had here, which is exciting. And then also just that floor general. She's played on her national team for several years and exposed at a high level and um, and I just think her ability to manage the flow of a game, um, to kind of be a quarterback on that court, um, I think is huge. So it's a position that we definitely needed, and uh, we're really excited about her. And being that she's from Spain, is she over there right now, or is she here? Yes. No, she's still, she's still there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do, you, do, you know, do you have any idea when she can actually get in here, or any sort of obstacles with that? Yeah, you know, I don't. I feel like everything's just kind of, you know, fluid in motion. And, and um, you know, we're just continuing to wait to, to find out what summer school looks like and, and what that's going to look like, um, you know, for our student athletes uh, with online classes. But are they going to be able to get here and work out? And, and with international kids, I think it's probably going to be, um, you know, look a little bit different than, than our kids from within the States. So, no, I, I don't know for sure. Um, you know, we're, we're anxious, but at the same time, the most important thing is that, you know, she's safe and, um, you know, we, we follow the guidelines that have been set out. We got Gabe up next. Go ahead. Yeah, Robin, um, obviously so much of the talk right now is, is about football and what will happen with fall sports. When you're talking to other coaches in your sport, is it a little bit more just – kind of you guys have to to see what happens you've got a little more time to to wait and react really to to what happens with these sports that have to start theoretically in the next month or two yeah it it definitely um you know i think i think that's kind of where we're all at and it's um it's so hard to navigate through it probably for you guys too it depends upon you know what you read who you listen to what tv station you have on um, you know, there's just, there's a lot of talk and you don't know what to, to really take in as, as the truth. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of rumblings out there, but, you know, I'm, I've just been um, praying for our administration, obviously, in those leadership roles that, you know, they'd be able to, to make good decisions. And, and I know they're tough decisions, but as they navigate through this, it's unprecedented territory, as we all know. And so uh, there's a lot of first, first times and what ifs. And, and uh, I think at the end of the day, Everybody just wants to make sure we keep our students and our student athletes um, safe. Matt Michaels up next. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, Robin. Uh, thanks for joining us here. I I'm wondering if you've had many conversations with the other coaches across the SEC about uh, the things that you're all, I guess, kind of struggling with right now and being able to support your teams. And is there anything specifically that you've put in place with your staff in, in trying to have team support, whether that's, you know, uh, obviously off the court right now or if uh, players are coming to you with uh, questions, I suppose. Uh, what, what are the things you've set up to do that? Yeah, most of our um, conference calls have been more about, um, you know, just the legislation that's out there, um, you know, and just thoughts on that. Um, not specifically on maybe what we're doing uh, with our teams. There's been a little bit of conversation about that, but, you know, again, I think for me right now, it's all about our player safety and uh, making sure that they're in a position that, um, you know, they can stay healthy and, and not compromise that. And at the same time, make sure they stay on task academically. A huge piece of it. And I think uh, the discipline that, um, you know, that they're being challenged with right now is, is probably a good thing for us. And I, I've always believed that that stuff carries over um, onto the court. And so for our staff, uh, it's, it's just the touches. It's, it's the Zoom calls, which we have once a week. Um, we're getting ready to start a book as a team. Uh, and then we'll, we'll meet once a week about that and, and just kind of talk through um, different thoughts and, and what people, nuggets the, that players got from that. Um, and then in addition to that, just more of the one-on-one -on -one conversations. Colin, you're next. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, I, I was just curious, now that you've had a, a little bit of time to process how last season went, just what your takeaways were. And I know we talked at the start of the season about the three transfers you had in, and you said none of them were going to be eligible this year. But did that surprise you at all? And what are you excited most about them being able to play next year? 
Yeah, so honestly, probably one of the toughest years I've had in 31 years of coaching. And it's just, um, it, it was a hard year for us. There's no doubt about it. But I'm a big believer that diamonds are formed in the fires. And uh, sometimes, um, you know, adversity is what propels you to even greater things. And I think there's, um, it was really important when the season was done. And you try to do it throughout the course of the season. But I think once the season's finished, and obviously with how things have played out, we've really been able to hit that pause button and do some reflection in I think for us, um, you know, in our team, I think there's a lot of lessons in there, a lot of life lessons and a lot of lessons about our program um, that, you know, we need everybody to ante up a little bit. I think uh, that leadership piece and it's going to be um, fun to see who kind of rises to the top in regards to being that voice. And that was a big thing that we talked about is just that that voice in the locker room and in that leadership component uh, of our team. Obviously, when we lost Sierra and, and Sophie and, and Lauren, uh, you know, they were they were very good about, um, you know, fulfilling that that role. But, um, you know, I just I, I think that that strong voice in the locker room is, is really important. I think with our with our three transfers. No, I was not surprised that they weren't eligible. I didn't go into it thinking they would be maybe hold not a little bit of hope, but um, didn't anticipate that would happen. But uh, very talented young ladies. Um, you know, all three of them uh, have a chance to make an immediate impact. We feel really good about our incoming freshmen. Uh, we'll, hot, we'll, we'll add a few more kids yet before it's all said and done. Uh, one, I, I was just on a phone call before I got on this call. And, and um, so you'll, you'll see something else coming out here pretty soon in the near future. So I, I feel really good about it. I think as hard as it was, um, the lessons that were learned, uh, the adversities that we had to go through, I think is going to make us uh, just that much better moving forward. So to you're up next. Go ahead. Hey, Robin. Um, obviously, a couple of your recruits this year who signed are from overseas. I was just wondering if there was any kind of difference in style you see in their game compared to, you know, here in America and just kind of what that's like. Yeah, you know, I think um, the, the biggest thing that, you know, with our international kids, I, I feel like um, there's a really – uh, high basketball IQ. Um, you see, you, you watch how kids play internationally. It's it's a really wide open court. Um, I think they like to play up tempo. I, I think you'll, you know, we thought we'd be more up tempo this year, but I think we've got the pieces and the horses to actually do that. I don't mean horses, the 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 personnel to actually do that um, this season. But you know, to me, the biggest thing is they get so much experience at a young age, and that their basketball IQ. Um, in, in the tempo that they like to play with, uh, understanding spacing, understanding, um, you know, just the flow of the game, those things that were, were things that really stood out to us as we were recruiting them. Next up is Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Robin, how much do you have to kind of actively monitor the, the transfer portal and how much do you have to look in there for, to, to add pieces when they pop up? Well, you know, I think it's something you, you definitely want to keep an eye on, and, and we do. Um, it's, it's just, it's crazy. I, I mean, you didn't ask me my feelings on that, but I definitely have feelings in, in regards to, um, you know, some of the legislation that's possibly coming out. But at the end of the day, um, you know, everyone's situation, everyone's journey is a little bit different, but we're definitely monitoring it. Uh, but I would also say, um, you know, we're being very careful. Um, you know, we want to bring in those, the, the kids that fit us and in our system and our style and um, not get caught up and, and how many stars are behind their name, but to, to make sure that they fit uh, who we are as a program. And so uh, have been on the phone a lot and have had a lot of Zoom calls. Uh, we've had uh, some really good interest in, in some kids that we had to say thanks, but no thanks. And, and uh, a few others that you might hear some, some good news from sooner than later. So we'll see how it all plays out. Gabe, go ahead. Yeah, Robin, and the obvious follow-up is what are your feelings on the legislation? <laughs> Why did I put that carrot out there? <laughs> um, I, you know, it's hard, and, and I think you've got to, you know, to a certain extent, uh, trust uh, those people in leadership positions that, you know, really, um, I think, you put a lot of time in, into the different studies and, and understanding what's going to be best for our sport and, and for athletes. But, you know, I just, I think there's a lot of life lessons in the process. And, and um, you know, I, I think sometimes to, to sit for that, that year after you transfer, I think, um, you know, it, it allows you to kind of get yourself together and, 
in um, life, right? So it's, it's just, we can't always just jump around. I think um, it's hard, but I also understand that there's certain situations that it's a no brainer. And I think that's where that appeals process, you know, was put in place. But then all of a sudden uh, you get so many people appealing and, and how, did, how did their appeal go through and somebody else didn't. Um, but I, you know, we've had a couple kids that have redshirted, whether they transfer or a freshman redshirt. And I always feel that fifth year on the back end can be so valuable. Uh, they got to, you know, they're older, they're more mature, they're more experienced, they've been around the game. Um, that fifth year looks so much different for them um, than maybe that first or second year. So I know there's pros and cons both ways. And there's certain situations that um, certainly should allow for immediate eligibility. Um, but I also think there's some life lessons in there and you got to, maybe we've got to do a better job doing our due diligence before we pick schools.